preparations are for a fundraising event at Watts Work Theatre. It's in Los Angeles. He's on 22nd floor. We welcome you all to our play. Today, the senior kids of Balbihar will present to you a story about a wonderful lady who is known for her devotion to her husband. Have you heard the story of Savitri? No. Who was she? Only one of the most awesome ladies to live, that's who. So, kind of like me. Sure. But she was a princess, one of the smartest and most beautiful princesses to live. So when it came for her to getting married, none of the princes really fit the bill. So, what did she do? Become a nun? As I mentioned before, none of the princes really fit the bill. So she went by herself roaming the countryside to find herself a match who was equal to her in nobility and purity. So where did she find a husband like that? Let me show you. His name is Satyavan. Satyavan, son of Dumatsen? Yes. Tell me more about this person. Satyavan is, lives in the forest with his blind father who was once king. Satyavan is very hardworking. He is devoted to his parents, and he is noble, kind, and handsome. But Savitri, I cannot let you live penniless in a forest devoid of all the comforts of a palace. How will you be able to chop firewood, fetch water from the river, cook, or clean? Satyavan is perfect in every way, but I'd strongly advise against this match. Why, I'll learn one. What can be so wrong with Satyavan? I have consulted Satyavan's horoscope and I found that within one year of marriage he will die. What? I cannot let you marry someone who will widow you after a year. Choose someone else, Savitri. Father, I am determined to marry Satyavan. One year with him is like a hundred lifetimes for me. Very well then. If this is what you want, you may marry Satyavan. May God bless you. Savitri moved into the forest hut with Satyavan happily. They lived happily. Oh, Savitri, suddenly I am feeling so tired. Rest here, my lord. Um, I will wake you when it's time to leave. But we mustn't be long. My parents will be waiting for us to return home. Don't worry, I will wake you. Savitri, Satyavan's time has come. Stand aside so I may take him to young Lok with me. Maharaj, <coughs> please don't take my husband away. We may ask for anything but Satyavan's life. Then please grant my father-in-law his sight and kingdom back. Very well. Satastu. Come, Satyavan. No, Yavraj, please don't. Savitri, I have already granted you a boom. Savitri, your dharma has ended with Satyavan's death. But for your persistence, I shall grant you one more boon. Wait, Navaraj, please, don't take him. Please. Savitri, you, for your courage, wisdom, and persistence, I shall grant you one final boon. Then please grant me a hundred sons, so my father-in-law's lineage may continue. Very well, Tatastu. Stop, Savitri! I have already granted you three boons, and yet you continue to follow me. <coughs> if you do continue, your abstinence shall earn you a curse. Nimaraj, you granted me a boon to have many children. I am devoted to my husband. How am I supposed to have children without him? Mm. Savitri, through your wisdom and courage, you have outsmarted me. Therefore, you have earned Satyavan's life back. Blessed are you and your husband. Satyavan, you're awake. Yes. Let us now return to my parents as they will be waiting. Yes. Let's go. All respected Pativratas. Her name is taken with as much as reverence as Sita and Draupadi. Due to her Pativratha dharma, even Yama could not take her husband away from her, even though he was destined to die. This story teaches us that strict adherence to her dharma is no less than performing years of strict penance. This is what Savitri was able to achieve. Let's, uh, let's welcome the next group. They're doing a folk dance. Please welcome Pranesh Kumar. Nilesh Kumar. Shruti Kumar.
Vaidehi Bharadwaj. And their teacher, Mahalakshmi Balaji, performing a Rajasthani folk dance. <laughs>